Hey there, Sheepy Doodlers. How are you doing? And welcome to Dogs of Influence series number 14. It's all sort of, it's all go, isn't it? So, so this is the 14th dog and this dog is called Spanky. <laughs> it was a massive mastiff. Uh, it's a giant, giant, enormous dog. And uh, Spanky's kind of Dogs of Influence, social media kind of name is going to be Big Ben. I need to do that nearer the microphone to get that ASMR thing going. Big Ben. Is that better? <laughs> and um, let's just see. So it's quite fun having. It's, it's been a, well, it's not exhausting because I did take Sunday off. But it's been a lot more work doing these every day than I thought it was. But what it has done is it has brought a little bit of a community together, hasn't it? With the same names sort of popping up and saying hello to each other every morning. Every mo Well, it's not morning. I, no, I just noticed Gabriel saying morning, evening, because some people, well, it's their evening. Some people, it's their morning. And for me, it's tea time. So that's a good thing. Mm-mm-mm. And um, so we've got Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence. Uh, Kotar, who's been there for a while. I don't know if Kotar is still here, actually. <laughs> and Judy, the big shed. And Octavia B. Hello. And Irina and Karina. And R now I'm going to see if I can pronounce this right. You have to tell me Ruth. Ruth Lelasher says, hello, Shu. I submitted a dog of influence to your email. Lord Freddie Francis of Halifax is his name. I hope you like his picture and story. I do. I do. Keep your eye out. OK. <laughs> Karina. Uh, Woo Julie is ready for class. Uh, is, is that meant to be pronounced? Woo Julie. Or is it W U Julie? Wad Wadjali? No, it couldn't be Wadjali. No. I like Woo Julie. There we are. Um, <laughs> Karen McMillan, hi, <laughs> who says, uh, Spanky was my favourite nose work dog. Don't tell the others. <laughs> so Karen, <laughs> Karen knows Spanky because Karen uh, films lots of kind of nose work stuff. So nose work is uh, where you kind of get a room or a place or something like that. The, the one I've seen on uh, on Karen's website is a, is a big stable and they put little sort of essential oils and things around, little dots. And then the, the dogs have to go and find the next smell. And um, it's kind of organised uh, by the police. And Well, I'll tell you a bit more about it in just a moment, actually, because we've got something about Spanky. Um, Stacey Newby says, oh, good, you found a big wrinkly dog. <laughs> Spanky certainly is a wrinkly dog. Cyber leader for football club. WHU football club. Watford Hull. United, something Waterhounds United Football Club. How about that? That makes it a football, a doggy football club. Um, there we go. Uh, Woo Judy says my favourite too. Oh, we got some, some, we got some spanky fans on today. I think Cyber Leader says, "Shoe, how do you draw a Tardis or Aladdin's cave?" Well, if you look up Shoe Rena drawing and. The word TARDIS after it in the uh, in the YouTube thing, you will find out how to draw TARDIS. Aladdin's cave, that's another thing altogether. Mm, I have to think about that. Karina Suarez, hola Karen, you know this dog? Yeah, everybody knows this dog. So, shall we? Oh, West Ham, of course, sorry. Yes. <laughs> oh. Right. Um, uh, for those in other countries, West Ham is a football club, a sort of a Premier League football club. So let's go and have a look. Uh, now, I've got this over there, so that's why I'm feeling a bit dis disorientated. I just need to move some things around on the screen. And then let's go and meet Spanky or Big Ben. Um, Spanky is the epitome of a gentle giant, says... Oh, Lord. Hang on, I've forgotten. Uh, I'm so terrible. And I was going to... thought I should put... Uh, <laughs> it's, Je it's not Jennifer, no. Oh, I thought I should go and put this on there. So I put Spanky in there. And Julie. Julie, forgive me. I was going to think, I thought I ought to go and put write Julie down there just so I remember or write it up on the uh, on the little post-it note in front of me. And I forgot. Um, Julie says, Spanky is the epitome of a gentle giant. He weighs in at a whopping 220 pounds. 
but can also be trusted with a six pound kitten. When he sees children, he lays down to make himself small so as not to frighten them. And there is so much of him, he can get five or six of them all petting him at the same time. People are always in awe of him when he approaches, but Spanky's calm and gentle spirit can put anyone at ease. The thing that should worry people, however, are the large volumes of drool that he can generate. If he eats a treat or gets a little warm, drool pools and forms two long shoelace thick strings on either side of his mouth. And then watch out when he decides to shake. And we've got some more pictures here. Look, there's Julian. <laughs> See how massive. <laughs> That's why they call them mastiffs, because it sounds like massive, doesn't it? <laughs> He's a big dog. Spanky volunteers as a therapy dog visiting nursing homes and his favourite, the Ronald McDonald House. He holds the spot as the number one ranked Mastiff in the National Association of Canine Scent Work and participated as a civilian volunteer for the Department of Defence in a narcotics detection trial to help military working dogs. Brains and personality. A dog of influence for sure. And I think we'll just go straight over uh, to the overhead camera. Here we are. And these are some sketches that I've sort of done and yeah there's lord uh, halifax appearing over there so this is kind of what i can draw today and oh look yeah so mm, you'll have to wait for that um so <laughs> just <laughs> letting ruth get a bit excited there um so um i really need this in front of me to remind me because there are some very definite lines this is one thing about um a big drooly dog um, is that they do have lots of exciting lines, <laughs> which makes it sort of slightly easier to draw. Um, so I'm going to start. Hmm, that's the page there. So I'm going to start about here. And sort of just draw a circle to get myself started. And I'm going to have sort of the big nose in the middle. Big nose. And then there's this two curves either side which sort of come down drooping down and go out slightly like that actually what I was going to do I'm going to start that again sorry if you're following along I'm going to start that again it's going to be exactly the same but I'm going to have a bit of an angle because when dogs twist their heads it just makes them look a bit more cute and appealing doesn't it um, so we want the nose sort of about there um, and then, so we're going to have that line coming down that way. So that's going to come either side like that and down and just out a little bit like that. And then we get this line under the nose and, and here it's really, really long, a really long line under the nose. And then this kind of, I don't know what expression it is. I, says it could easily turn into a depressed expression, <laughs> which we don't want. Um, and what we want is a kind of a kindly, sort of thoughtful, hello, kind of expression. Um, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw two lines like that. And I'm going to make this slightly different. I'm going to have those curving that way. I'm just trying this at the moment. And then like that. So we're getting a kind of a, so, so we probably want them curving up a little bit actually, because it's that down makes it look depressed. So, so we can maybe get a, a, a bit of, um, in the eyes, we get the smile in the eyes. That's what we're after like that. And then we want a, a, a kind of a, like a seagull <laughs> over the top there and another one there. And then we take this, head a little bit higher to about there and then we're going to do something slightly sort of strange so we'll have that as the top of the head and then we'll come down a bit like that and then we're going to do a kind of an, a gentle s a kind of a snake like that and then from here then we'll go over the top of it like that which looks a bit strange until you put this kind of triangle in there and then that kind of brings it all together. And then we've got 
a kind of a Ziggy Stardust kind of line here, fold like that, another one there. And, um, and then we want to have this sort of coming down here and we've got a double, you know, we've got a double chin here. We don't really want to talk about that. It's too embarrassing. Um, <laughs> and we'll have a, a great big collar coming up round the back there and we'll put it in. Um, I, you know, I know there are modern clasps and things these days, but um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how they work. And then we'll have to have something going on here. I have a tiny little, I have a tiny, <laughs> if you put a tiny little dog tag in there, it'll make him look even bigger. Okay, now this is, we've got a bit of shoulder in there, and then we want to bring this down. I don't think I've, I should have started higher up, I think, I think this is a very big picture. Um, and then, uh, and then we want sort of a chunky body, it's probably about there. So we want the leg coming back. Uh, I think I'm going to have to add another piece of paper on at the end or something. I'll have to do it um, when I do the, the, uh, the when I get the, um, it's going to be a bit longer than that. I should have started higher up. Sorry about that. Um, when I get the, the, the next phase, I'm going to get some uh, tracing paper kind of stuff over the top. Um, now we're going to be sort of big powerful shoulders that are coming down there and that would be going straight down and then we want an angle <laughs> I could get a null piece of paper um, with I'm going to continue him out there like that sorry about this but this is this is the kind of the working out stage so you can do this kind of thing <laughs> and add the extra bits on so I think we want kind of about the same height sort of coming down so this really wants to be about there and I'm going to bring that down there again with this kind of S shape that's coming down straight down to there and this will be sort of coming down there with another um, ellipse kind of shape there and this we want an ellipse there and and another one about there something like that and a bit of a tail so it's looking a little hmm it's just yeah you can't help it with all that sort of long <laughs> why the long face um i'm sure spanky big man gets um <laughs> gets asked that a lot it's a kind of a uh, Probably a mastiff, um, stroke, bloodhound, kind of basset hound kind of joke that they all have to put up with. Every day someone comes along and says, why the long face? Ha 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 ha. As if they've never heard it before. Um, I think some, some people and the names and things, they have little jokes like that associated with them. And like tall people. What's the weather like up there? And short people. What's the weather like down there? How, how many times do they hear that? A day? Like, whoever says it's so original and they've never heard that one before. So, there we go. And so I'm just going to kind of draw that like that so I'm just sort of smoothing this out for myself I'm kind of doing the next phase of this and and I think yeah so I want that more up that way I think and I put another little line underneath it so it's going to get and then another kind of thing on the top there I think it's just going to get a hint of <laughs> Smart. I, don't know. I think it's just very difficult to to get that uh, smiley look on a on such a long face. It's a fabulous beast. Uh, and who was it saying yesterday? Someone was saying yesterday I should be doing a, a Dalmatian, but nobody sent me a Dalmatian. And, um, and um, Great Danes as well. There. 
Um, they have the, the Great Danes are kind of the, the laziest dogs in the world, I think. They can't be bothered to stand up even. If you go anywhere near a Great Dane, they'll mm, start leaning up against you because they can't be bothered to stand up on their own. Uh, and I imagine... Um, I imagine Spanky Big Ben has probably got a, a similar kind of thing. It's that, oh yeah, I'll just lie down here and let all the kids sit on top of me because it's an awful lot easier than standing up. Uh, let's bring that sort of down to there and then quite, it goes quite forward and then we want those two front paws, uh, or digits rather, and then that's going to come around and a little carpal pad in there and we have a hint of sort of furriness I'm going to want that again that's going to be about there like that and have that little <laughs> little dog tag so and uh, so this is um the, the project here is because of I can't mention this I'm doing all these books dogs because uh this book here walker the mystery of the missing millions is coming out on the 25th that's next week next thursday week tomorrow and um it's the follow-up book to walker the boy who can talk to dogs and um and in here i have sort of lots of dogs and and in the third book which i'm kind of planning at the moment uh i want to have a group of dogs who are social media stars <laughs> in their own right and if you if you hashtag something like um, dogs of Instagram or dogs of Twitter, depending on probably dogs of Facebook as well, I should admit. Oh, I haven't thought of looking at this. And um, if you if you do that, then you'll find you know, there are dogs with large um, social media followings. And and these dogs I wanted in, in my story. And so I thought I'd get people to send me in their dogs. Um and I would draw them and turn them into characters. So at the moment, this is a bit of a portrait. And tomorrow on the Wednesday Drawing Show, I'm going to do much more. I'm not going to do a new dog. I'm going to take some of these uh, dogs I've done and sort of turn them into characters. And they'll be grayscale as well, like they are in the book. Let me show you. So it's a black and white book. And so the pictures in here are black and white. Um, and so I'll be... Um, doing that in here like a bit like this so this is noodle that I did <laughs> a couple of days ago this is noodle and this is sort of turning her more into a, a character and I'll sort of show you sort of getting faces and characters and stuff like that now that <clears throat> Judy said that um, Spanky is very very gentle and uh, can be really really gentle with kittens as well so I think we need a little kitten and I measured look there's a picture here um, with uh, Spanky and uh, a kitten so this is, this is quite a large kitten I think and look so from the nose down to the chops you're going to fit two and a quarter head heights in there at least or maybe even two and a half so oh, we don't want that camera we want this camera so i'm imagining we could have from there to about there then that's going to be sort of head height is going to be about like that and we're going to want a little uh little sort of cute little kitten with um big eyes like that and something like that a little cute little tail uh, it's going to be something like that. The kind of big, big legs and big paws on kittens we have, don't we? Something like that. So let's just sort of give a bit of scale <laughs> to the drawing. So now that we've done that, I am going to get. Oh, I haven't prepared from yesterday, so I'm going to get this one. Take this one off. And I'll save the. The tape. Oh, no, no, well, I'll try to anyway. Reuse the tape from yesterday. Oh, was that the day before when I did noodle yesterday? <laughs> Feels like weeks ago. <laughs> um, and I need to get a bit of um, watercolour paper. And so I'm using all sea white papers. 
this was the the thin paper I was using is C white of Brighton 50 gram per square inch layout paper uh, it's nice and thin so you can see through it and I've lost it <laughs> I've lost it <laughs> I don't believe it I've lost that I've lost the thing of the sketch that I just it's going to be underneath here isn't it There we go. So uh, this is on uh, sea white um, layout paper, and then I'm going to use sea white watercolor paper. This is a big drawing um, on the top. Uh, so if I do that and do that, then I can get this in the right place. So so all these kind of little intermediate intermediate steps means that you can get it all laid out exactly how you want. Layout paper, that's what it's for. You get it laid out how you want it. Um, and then I can draw through from here. And if I turn that light out, you should find it a bit easier to see what I'm doing. Um, and so we're going to sort of draw across the top like that and then down here. That's nice and smooth because they have nice soft velvety ears so you want to get that smoothness and then maybe a little bit of a fold in there somewhere like that a bit of a curve to it and then we want this seagulls <laughs> floating across the forehead um let's hmm i'm going to do that and that and that and then one across the top and one underneath so this is all experimenting really to get this um to try and get a kind of friendly slightly smiley look I'm, i think it's overdoing it a bit actually i don't not sure i really needed to but anyway let's go with it so it's this little curve in the lower eyelid that i'm hoping will get a bit of a smile in the eyes um, because we can't, get, can't really get a smile in the. Um, uh, let's put that one in there. We can't really get a smile in the mouth, which I've been doing a lot of on the other dogs. I think they're not matching sizes, are they? So let's put that in. Make that a little bit smaller there. Uh huh. And then we want to get this kind of curve. It's the Aladdin Sane bit. And then we want this sort of curve coming down here, so the big slobber chops. And I don't know if you saw that. Did you see that? That this, this picture says down in the <laughs> down around here. Look, it says I have a salivary gland gland problem. <laughs> oh dear, uh, poor old Spanky. So yeah. So you don't want to stand too close. Julie says if you stand too close, he gets all sort of foamy and frothy at the mouth and then suddenly he shakes his head and <laughs> this drool flicks everywhere. So I could do a little downward curve there, but I think I'm going to do a little, a little upward curve, which is just, yeah, that does it with the eyes. Uh, I think that does it. Sort of brings a little bit of kind of a, Oh, so it's a, it's a sort of grandfatherliness, isn't it, I suppose? <laughs> and then we want that bottom one there like that, and then we can bring that in there. And I think, when, you know, when you're doing characters, those little bits, are, it's those, those things, it's those expressions that you're after are probably the hardest thing to get right, and you just have to draw them again and again, and then suddenly you get it. And, uh, and think, yes, that's them. And it's a bit like riding a bike, actually, because it seems like once you've done it once, uh, then you can sort of get them again. Cause, you know, it's, yeah, like riding a bike, really. You know, you can, um, and then you can just just sort of draw them again. And that I think it's that a drawing again and again. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> Like an old broken record. What's a record, Daddy? <laughs> oh dear. 
Mrs. Rayner today, she, she hasn't quite joined the 21st century yet, um, is very thrilled to have received some CDs. <laughs> so, you know, which my son and I are most amused by, but she just cannot move on. She can't, she can't even cope with the, with the idea of Spotify or streaming music or anything. No, she likes her CDs, but that's, you know, that's fair enough. I'm fat. I'm sure some of you are just saying, yeah, so. Um, so she's um, got the CDs. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, gonna set you a little quiz. There's no prizes. <laughs> what CDs do you think Mrs. Rain had today? <laughs> she had one, two, five CDs arrived today. <laughs> Why was I mentioning? What was I mentioning that about? I don't, oh, records, broken records, yeah. So, uh, in case you don't know, <laughs> a, a record is a thing that we used to play music on before CDs. No, before music cassettes, <laughs> which were before we moved to CDs, which was before we then went to MP3 players and then iPods and things which and iPhones and Spotify's and streaming and stuff like that so and and we used to put our records onto f turntables gramophone turntables and the thing would spin round and round and round <laughs> big black disc and we put an arm over it which had a little diamond needle on it which sort of scratched its way across the surface and um i'm just going to put a little hint of i no, i'm going to leave those um and then it would play music and to uh, some people of a certain generation you know they just can't move on mind you there are young people of a certain generation who've discovered the joys of vinyl <laughs> who um, can't get enough of it either. So let's do this little kitten. Ding, 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 ding. Like that. Um, I think this little kitten has to have a, a, a collar with a bigger, <laughs> um, a bigger name tag. And there we go. I'm not spending hours on the kitten. Uh, it'll be something like that. Good. Um, now it's time to get the paint out. So I'll turn the main lights back on again. Turn this one off. Ah. <sighs> So much. So uh, this this shouldn't be too difficult or complicated to to paint this one. And I'm using my Winsor and Newton Cotman Sketches Pocket Sketches set, which is a good basic set to start with if you've never done watercolor before. And if you're completely new to watercolor, you think, oh, I really like to do that. I don't know where to start. <laughs> Come and join me on Patreon. In fact, let me do that. If you enjoy these shows and you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee to keep me going, head on over to patreon.com slash shoe where you will find all the details of how you can support this channel. In the meantime, on with the show. Indeed, on with the show. The Patreon isn't just about supporting this channel, but if you just want to support this channel so that I can keep doing this kind of thing, then, then that would be really, really great. Um, but on Patreon, I, uh, you know, Saturday, every other Saturday, I have a Zoom, two Zoom tutorials, one in the morning, one in the afternoon for different parts of the world. Um, and um, and I, there's lots of extras and all sorts of stuff that you get on Patreon. And it's, and it's, it's and there's a bit of a community building up on there as well, really, um, of people like you who are just really wanting to learn to, to do watercolour and so not this Saturday coming the Saturday after I'm going to do an absolute beginner's watercolour 
thing to sort of start off. Um, so you could come and join us and do that. Now, what I've done is I've got a bit of this yellow and a little bit of this yellow ochre, just kind of, uh, th this is an aquash water brush. So the water is in the pen. It flows through the uh, the brush. And if you squeeze gently, you can see it drips, but don't squeeze too hard, just very gently. Otherwise uh, you, can, you can kind of block it up. Um, and the more water, the paler it's going to be. And I don't want this to be terribly strong, so I'll just add a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit. It's getting it right. So that's probably going to be about right. And as I was saying yesterday, the the secret with watercolor is, is the paper is is the light source. And so, you know, if you've got oil paint or something like that, then you're putting the color directly onto the canvas or whatever it is but here and and all the light is in the paint the light and the color is in the paint but in watercolor the light is in the paper and you're putting these really thin transparent glazes over the top uh, like like as if they're you know sort of colored cellophane like you get on Christmas candies do you get is do you have <laughs> that's a British thing <laughs> we have these sweets <laughs> christmas sweets but they've ruined that as well so uh called um quality street which you only ever really see at christmas time and they're they used to be wrapped up in colored cellophane and you spend half christmas day unwrapping and eating these things and putting them in front of your eye and seeing the world through yellow and pink and purple uh, cellophane filters <laughs> like some weird uh, Christmas acid trip or something and um, but they no they don't do they put them in the new Kevlar wrappers or whatever they call whoops um, so to clean the brush you just get a bit of kitchen towel and just squeeze slightly and dip dab dip dab um, so it's yeah it's like putting a cellophane you know colored cellophane over the top do they still call it cellophane? <laughs> is that an old-fashioned term as well? Uh, it's got cellophane has got a kind of nineteen twenties, so because of celluloid, that's why. But uh, I don't know what do we call. Do we still call it cellophane? Um, I'm thinking now. So I'm adding a little bit of this, which is um, burnt sienna, I think, or it's burnt sienna or raw umber or something like that. Um, so it's a little bit sort of browner and I'm just going to, while it's wet, I'm just going to kind of flood it into there. And while, oh, that's going to be a bit too dark. While it's wet, then it'll just flow um, into, into the bits that are already wet. I'm just going to do that so that you don't get a hard edge. I think we're going to probably start getting hard edges up around here you can see there's a hard edge of the paint stroke but brush stroke there which i think we're going to start getting up here too um and so we're going to want this to be darker there underneath the um ears like that and underneath here too get a bit more i think we're going to make that a little bit more sort of brown around there but we're going to want to get it more sort of chocolatey brown in a moment. Um, um, yum, yum, yum. I think we'll get those bits up there. And we want to have them around the eyes as well. Um, and then actually we're going to do the chops here. Add them in because it's going to, we'll be painting a sort of a chocolatey brown on top of that. Um, and I don't think I want that there, so I'll just push that out of the way. Um, so there are things you can do while it's wet, and there are effects that you get while it's all wet. There are effects that you get when it's dry, um, and that's a lot of that is is about playing, um, just playing with it, seeing what happens. Uh -huh. um, and doing little kind of exercises so maybe that's what I should be doing so coming up with lots of little lots of little exercises to try and see what 
what happens when you do this and what happens when you do it. You can see here it wasn't quite wet enough here and so you're getting this little kind of tide mark where it wasn't wet enough to kind of flow in because this is quite a big area I'm trying to keep wet <laughs> and I've got lights and everything on here it's quite hot in here um, so and I hope the microphone's working all right today <laughs> I, haven't had, I haven't had a ping from Judy to tell me the microphone's gone funny um, I know what went wrong with that yesterday and so I've swapped out the microphones for today and in fact I've got another little microphone coming tomorrow which um, I'll see whether that sort of solves my I'm trying to think what my problem is with microphones um, I'm not sure I think the problem is that I want one microphone and at the moment I got two and then I kind of forget to turn one on or I put it in the wrong place or something like that and so um, I've got a, a lavalier microphone coming tomorrow which is cheap but everyone says it's really rather good so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see <laughs> if it comes in time for the Wednesday drawing show which will be here tomorrow in which as I say I'll be turning these more into characters maybe I'll add some drool um, but I don't, I don't know if I want to mm. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I want to draw attention to that <laughs> but then again you see them oh you see you can see it in the story can't you then you know if you've got a great big mastiff they're drooling all over the place it's got lots of comedic possibilities in the story um, so maybe I'll be. Mm. You see, that sort of will have gone into my mind now, and um, I'll be, I'll be thinking about that for the next six months. It'll just be turning over in the back of my mind, thinking mastiff drool. Uh, <laughs> now this is all still quite wet around here, which is what I want. So I want this kind of fading in at the edges bit sort of around oh, cleaning the brush okay so that I can bring that down to there um, and it's amazing the sort of thing that happens um, with things like that you sort of get a little bit of new knowledge like drooling mastiffs uh, <laughs> And it goes into the back of your brain and you sort of forget about it. But your brain doesn't forget about it. It just keeps on thinking. And and then suddenly, the day that you sort of think about getting down to write, you think, oh, how am I going to do this? How? Oh, you think, drooling mastiffs. <laughs> and some little part of your brain has been working away at it for the past six months. Now this is um, burnt umber, I think, the dark one, and this is French ultramarine, which is blue. So I'm just adding that to make it even darker, and I want to because I want this really sort of dark chocolatey there. And I'm going to do it about like that. Clean up that little mistake where I went over the top, <laughs> and then I'm just going to smooth those bits out, having cleaned the brush like that. And again, with a bit of ultramarine in there, I'm going to make this darker. And while it's still oh, a bit more, while it's still wet, then I should be able to sort of smooth it in a bit and sort of get that, get a little bit of a sense of curvature of the chops there a bit. And I'll just oh, clean that brush <laughs> and just sort of do that there. And I think we're going to want a little bit on the underneath um, here as well. I think we're going to want a bit more shadow in there. And also underneath here as well on the chin. So I think that's... I don't think I'm going to do much else to the 
rest. So I'll get the 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 greys. I would normally want to be using a colour called neutral tint, but I'm trying to use just this set so you can see how to do things. So brown and blue make greys. So I'm just going to do that to add a bit of shadow in there and a little bit of shadow in there too. Maybe a bit of shadow on the pause there. Um, a bit of shadow underneath there. Uh, 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 I'll get a bit of blue as well. I'll just do these little metallic bits and the little kitten's metallic bits and then I'll do the little, little kitten. <laughs> You are going to make, um, you see, I'm getting excited because I'm a cat person. <laughs> uh, and I do like, uh, I do like dogs, but I can't live with dogs. I'm, you know, I'm a cat person. Um, so we'll do something like that. And, and I can't tell you what it is. It's, it's a, it's a hormonal thing. I think it's sharing the same space with the dog. Um, I think it would be all right if if I lived out on a <laughs> in a farm or something like that, and the wilds are nowhere, and you could just leave the doors open, the dog can come in on their own like a cat does. But um, I think it's that it's a huge responsibility looking after a dog in in um, in an urban environment. I think he has to take them out for walks and stuff like that. And you know, I'll be going, oh, I just want to draw this, and oh, I want to do, I want to go here now, and oh, I can't take the dog. Or you know, selfish, you could say. Um, put a bit of yellow in there. I think the kitten should maybe have a bit of pink in it. Oh, clean that brush, clean that brush. Uh, if you've got questions and stuff that you want to ask, put them in the chat now, and then when I'm finished, I will come and answer all of those questions and stuff like that. But in the meantime, I'm just going to kind of plow on with this. Uh, we want a nice brown nose. First, let's start with, let's do these eyes. So I'm going to do very yellow eyes. I'm leaving a little bit of white up at the top here where I'm not painting it like that and then I'm going to get burnt sienna quite strong straight from the pan so these are little these are called half pans because they're half the size of a full pan um, um, just get a little bit from there and stick that onto there like that so we get a little bit of kind of warmth in the eyes too and I think then we're going to need some quite dark bits into there like that and maybe a little bit underneath and around the eyelids <laughs> this is this is becoming too much of a portrait rather than a character uh, I think like a, it so I'm going to leave a little bit of white there for the shininess in the nose like that and then I'm going to get some more solid colour straight off the pan like that. Uh, put that on the top and around it. I think we still need some shadow in there and I think that needs to be darker on that side and on that side. So I'm just going to clean the brush and wash that in there like that. Um, just to a f oh, <laughs> a white collar. So let's have, um, he's going to be the priest or something like that. No, let's have, uh, let's have a nice blue. Oh, the trouble when I'm mixing up greys, then the blue gets dirty. So I have to clean that all up. Um, like that. So let's have a, a blue collar in there. Have a little bit of white edge to it which will help to add a bit of thickness to the uh, to the collar um, and I'll sort of add a bit of, sort of shade in there like that mm -hmm. and then I think a little sort of pink pink collar and then I think we just need some stripes as well 
to do little ones like that. We turn the brush over. I need to get a point on the brush. So you have to kind of rotate the brush a bit to get the that where you want it. That can come across like that. Maybe up there too. There's a little kitten like that. Maybe a little a wagging tail. They don't really wag their tails, do they, cats? They kind of waft them. <laughs> Serenely. Yeah. That's a kiss a cat thing. I'm, I'm too I'm too proud to wag. I'm more I'm a cat. I <laughs> There's a whole story in that, the cat that wagged his tail. Thought it was a dog. Hmm. Right, nearly done, nearly done, nearly done. I'll come and see what you've been saying. I don't think I'm going to do much more. And then I'll just clean the brush. And then I'll just smooth that little bit of shade there. I think you probably need a bit of shade in down there too. And then clean the brush and just shade that out. Maybe you need a bit in there too. I'm not going to do any more. <laughs> so if I come over to here, then we should be able to do that if I go a bit wider. Yeah, you can see, you can see all of that. <sighs> Let's see what you have to say. <laughs> uh, quite a bit, quite a bit going on here. So where did we finish? Um, Cyberleader, West Ham, that's where we got to, wasn't it? Karen says, I met Spanky and Julia at a nose work trial a few years ago. Great, in Virginia, you think? Jose Adriano Queiroz says, hello, Mr. Reni from Brazil. Hello and obrigado for being here. That is right, isn't it? Thank you, Portuguese. Um, Spanky has the looks too. Yippee, Ruth says. <laughs> Karen, uh, normally I watch these by myself today. I have not one, but two cats watching me. <laughs> Crispin, are they glaring at the screen? Uh, one is Be My Bengal. Uh, I imagine the silent conversation going on between the cats, Karen. Spanky's a friend to all cats. I think they know. Good. <laughs> um, woo, Julie says, lots of next fall. Lol, he wore... Oh, I see. Woo, Julie. Of course, Julie. Woo. Sorry. Duh. <laughs> this is Julie Woo. Woo, Julie of Spanky. Of course. <sighs> I'm not with it today, am I? Uh, lots of neck folds, lol. He wore a 34 inch collar. I don't even have a belt size. No, I do actually. <laughs> uh, shoes paper isn't big enough for Spanky. I think you got it. They ask why he's sad and also where's his saddle? Of course, yeah. Uh, these are the questions you get asked when you're a big dog. Where's your saddle? Yeah, <laughs> there's got to be lots of. Because you say that to a horse, don't you, as well? Why the long face? <clears throat> Um, and, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Karen says, gee, what's that kitten doing to Spanky in that photo? Having a bit of a cuddle, a bit of a do. Because cats do that, don't they, with their foreheads? That's how they say hello. Uh, Gabriel says, I love his expression. It's, it's noble somehow. And, you know, I say how quite often uh, when I'm doing characters, I'm sort of thinking about, you know, the expression I'm trying to get. So... I've been feeling very noble this afternoon to get that noble look. <laughs> um, Julie says, uh, biting Spanky, of course. That's what the cats do, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's a vicious little bit. Have you got enough ink? No, I don't think so. <laughs> um, gramophones, says Judy. This is all, if you haven't been watching, we've been talking about stuff. So if the arm skipped a bit, you could put a penny on the pickup to have the right weight and, and your record would last half as long and it would start getting a bit kind of scratchy and yeah. Uh, how's everyone doing? Um, says Robin, uh, your, your son, your son. I'm doing all right, thank you. Uh, Crispy says, my dad never said record player in his life. It was always the gramophone. Um, and then, yeah, because the gramophone I think of as a full thing, like which has like a box which has the turntable and the amplifier and the speaker and everything in it. And and then we all got, you know, into hi-fi and then we had separate amplifiers and then we had decks. 
So you had a record deck, which was a thing on its own, which you plugged into the amplifier. And so those decks then sort of... <laughs> <laughs> disc jockeys so dj comes <laughs> hello you young people there's a history lesson going on. the word dj comes from disc jockey okay so they were the people who used to play discs <laughs> which is what records were originally called when they were 78s so that were the, anyway so uh so they would play discs uh, and the, the jockey being like a person on a horse and they're the person who's in charge of the thing. So, and then came the mobile disco. And once they started making these decks, you could put a couple of decks together and you could sort of fade one into the other. So you'd have a record playing and you fade one out into the other. And then they went and sort of took them out of the decks and then they made one big deck. Oh, sorry, banging the microphone here. And, and sort of fitted them in there and it all became a great big thing. So now when you see those, I don't know, I don't know how they work, the modern DJs, they have those little things with the two little circles and they're going, well, those are kind of representatives of what used to be two record players. There you are, here endeth the lesson. <laughs> Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so uh, Stacy says, great microphone. Good, thank you. Uh, Big Chef says, there's a Lavalier mic from Aptech, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that might be the one. I can't remember. I'll tell you tomorrow. Octavia B. Shoot, I'm really curious to see how you turn a portrait into a character. Do you anthropomorphize the subject you are drawing to give it personality and expression? That's exactly it. And that's exactly the word. Um, and and it's interesting because uh, today I've been asked to, <laughs> to write a little piece about uh, some books I illustrated for an author called Rose Impey about, well, a few years ago anyway, and, and how we came to do it. And she had never written um, animal stories before because she didn't want to anthropomorphise them. Uh, but she liked the way that I did my character. So she's, in the end, she wrote these stories and so I was kind of allowed to anthropomorphize them in character, but I wasn't allowed to give them clothes um, or moustaches or things like that, <laughs> hairdos. Uh, and, and that's really difficult, especially when you're writing a book about worms. Uh, and I wasn't allowed to give the worms hands or anything like that. <laughs> so, and there were a whole army of worms I had to make all different and everything. So uh, <laughs> let me find that for you. <laughs> Uh, see if I can find it. Um, where are we now? They're up here. Um, keep talking amongst yourselves. Too many books. There, there were 16. This is 16 books. If you can still hear me. Oh, we want William is what I'm looking for. Uh, 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 I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it. Um, oh. Oh. Uh. I'm looking, I'm looking too many pages tiny, I? <laughs> we want, oh, we want William, here we are. Right, and let me take it over to this one again. So I was allowed, um, I was allowed to give him glasses because he's a bit short-sighted and re reading books. Um, so I had to kind of do this thing with the ends of their tails being their hands. Um, and it's, you can't really get too much i was look i gave him my brow so i got away with that uh, and the glasses the glasses kind of separate him out and make him one character but it's very difficult getting a lot of worms here <laughs> and make them <laughs> look different so anyway that's about the great worm charming championships <laughs> Um, Octavia B. Yes, so we've done that. So, Tornado Fire. Hello, Shoe. Hello, Tornado Fire. Uh, Madeline Beery. Beautiful. Thank you, Madeline. Karen. Let's call the kitten Oliver Honey Badger. Okay. <laughs> uh, Tornado Fire. For how long have you been an author? Um, since 1987, my first book was published, so I've been doing it for a while. And I only look kind of, you know, 40 ish, don't I? Something like that. <laughs> um, so, um, Lawrence says, quite soulful eyes, shoes. <laughs> Looks great. <laughs> Thanks, Lawrence. Uh, Julie says, oh my goodness, I love the interaction between Big Ben and Oliver Honey Badger. <laughs> Nikki, how are you? You're working up. There we are in New Zealand. How do you add highlights or do you do painting around them and just build up the darker areas? That's exactly what I do. Um, 
so yeah that i think that's sort of something I, I'll, I'll sort of talk about in a couple of weeks and i do my 101 watercolor for patrons come and join me on patreon and you can be it's how much would you pay for an art class really if you went to your local art class and you can come and join me <laughs> two times a month he's only five dollars i mean really that's cheap um so <laughs> there's a link down below um take you straight to trade state take you straight straight to patreon you can come and join me on zoom uh interact and ask me questions on there uh we'll do a, a watercolor 101 in some a week on saturday um and you'll be helping me support this channel and keep this channel going um and oh have you liked have you liked this chat have you look, pressed the little like button down down there down there press that like button and uh <laughs> make sure you, you you like and subscribe too so you know to come back and when you do when you see that little bell that says notifications click that and say all notifications and then you'll know when the next video is coming live and which will be tomorrow on the wednesday drawing show um nikki so uh J judy says his nose is such a gorgeous shape it is and that's something i've really noticed doing all these dogs um has got me to understand an awful lot more about dog anatomy in fact you can see i think in the background you could could see look see i got my anatomy book out there <laughs> animal anatomy um uh, and so i've been learning a lot about anatomy uh, dog anatomy and stuff like that and um uh, um, uh, and, and, and the noses, every different breed has a different shaped nose. And that's something I've been really kind of learning about. And, you know, people say, how do you get good at drawing something? And, and I think if you want to get draw, good at drawing everything, you have to draw everything all day long. If you want to get good at drawing dogs, draw lots of dogs. And you, 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 you can't expect to get really good at drawing everything if you want to get really good at drawing one thing choose one thing and work at that and learn all about that subject and you become an expert at that subject and and you know uh, there are things i've done with dogs before i'm not quite sure about this this back leg bit here uh, i think i could have done that a little bit more subtly um but uh, <laughs> I've, I've always hated doing dogs back legs and, and also the front legs down here but now I kind of understand what's going on in the bone structure it, it's kind of easier to do it and and because I'm doing it every day I've been doing it for over a week well this is number 14 it's a fortnight it's two weeks um, then uh, you, you know you really start to learn um Karen McMillan, the kitten grew up to like kayaking. I have pictures. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Irina says, Thank you, she this was really relaxing. Love the small cat. Stacy says, Great Karina, can you tell me more about how you get the ideas for the characters? How is your routine for writing them down? I, I don't really write down the characters like that. They're kind of in my head, and I know some people have sort of card index systems and they have in sort of online databases and things and i i think i think it's the drawings um i think that's what makes me different to writers <laughs> writers so writers will maybe have a great big sort of indexing system of the characters and their kind of things um and what they're like and i think as i'm drawing and sketching coming up with the characters I get to know them by sketching and and it's using a different part of the brain doing that and and it kind of sticks i had a comment today so, so, some somebody saying i'm i'm in k12 or something and why why am i being sent to this stupid video to draw this stupid thing it was how to draw the double helix the dna helix why why is my teacher making me draw this stupid thing so i wrote back to them, I made a comment, I said, you know, because you will never forget <laughs> the double helix because you've drawn it. And if you'd have just read it in a book, you'd gone, yeah, looked at a photo, yeah, because you've drawn it, you will never forget it. And by drawing the characters, I think you sort of, while you're drawing them and thinking about them, and you know, you've heard me do voices and stuff like that, you kind of build the character up in the drawing and then that goes into the story. 
Uh, does that answer your question, <laughs> Karina? Uh, Nikki says, what CDs did Mrs. Rayner get? OK, she got Black Sabbath. <laughs> I've known Mrs. Rayner since I was 14. And uh, so she's got the first Black Sabbath. And I can't remember. It's just called Black Sabbath, isn't it? I think. And then she's got Masters of Reality. And... I think the first Christmas I knew uh, Mrs. Rayner, so I met her in the summer, and, and we all used to hang around her house, a whole gang of us. Her mum was incredible. She let us all come and hang out. Um, and that whole Christmas, I remember, we had, we, <laughs> we had Black Sabbath playing. What is this I see before me? Um, <laughs> so she's reliving her youth. She's going back. Uh, and then she also got uh, uh, Wet, Wet, Wet. And, oh, what's the name? Cockney Rebel. And there was one other she got. Oh, I've forgotten now. There was one other, one other, which has escaped me. No, anyway, there we are. That's She's reliving her youth. Um, <laughs> Lola says, hi. Hi, Lola. Uh, Tornado Fire. He's so jolly. Uh, David says, a book about worms. That's a challenge to illustrate. It certainly was, I can tell you. <laughs> uh, Zippy Doodle. Hiya. Uh, Karina, practice, practice, practice. Nick, he says, hola, mi amiga, to uh, Karina. <laughs> OK, well, we have a bit of a delay on here. Um, there's about 10 seconds. So if you've got any last questions you would like to ask me, then you've got about 10 seconds seconds otherwise it's time to start wrapping up oh we've been at this an hour where does an hour go it's incredible isn't it uh gabriel says i was banking on mrs rain getting at least one molly hatchet album oh well no she's stuck in the past i'm afraid she's stuck in the 70s it's um yeah that's <laughs> mind you i don't think i've I think, I don't know, I seem to have stopped listening to music. I don't know what happened. It was about 10 years ago, I think. And so the last album I got was, um, oh, golly, what's her name? I can't remember. Um, <sighs> looking it up now. Um, I'm trying to think, I can't remember even her name. Uh, the Icelandic lady, not Bjork, the other one. Um, yeah, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Uh, and Catherine, Catherine Feeney as well. She was one of the last one I listened to as well. I think. Um, oh, golly, what is her name? I'm, I'm looking through here. I'm giving you time. I'm giving you time to um, come up with any questions and suggestions and stuff like that. Oh my goodness, I can't find her anywhere. Uh, hang on, if I go and do as quick, I can't even find how to search. Uh, if I do that, it doesn't help at all. Oh, don't be silly. She's not in my library. That's why I can't find it. <laughs> um, there we are. Uh, D D D D Judy says, oh, you saw Steve Thingy, Steve Harley of Cockney Rebel live at Wickham Festival. How fantastic. Her brother's festival. He was great. How amazing. There we are. Is he still going, I wonder? Steve Harley was going to be the Phantom of the Opera before it went to Michael Crawford. Trivia. OK, I'm finished. Steve, Har Steve Harvey. Harv yeah, there was the Steve Harvey. Bet there was Michael, Steve Harley and... Yeah, the Something Harvey band, wasn't it? Anyway, I think that is... <laughs> I think that's probably about time to say cheerio. So I got my finger hovering over the button and I'll say thank you very much for watching. <laughs> I'll tell you, B. Uh, yes, I do prefer watercolour pans to tubes. Yes, I do. Because you can take them out and do sketching an awful lot more easily. And it's just how I started. And I never kind of, you know, it's quite often it's when you start doing something, you stick with it. OK, thank you all very much for watching and I will see you tomorrow on the Wednesday Drawing Show. Uh, and until then, I'm going to press this button. I'll say cheerio. 
Well, thank you so much for watching and make sure you click that little subscribe button. And when you do, ring the bell so that you get notifications of when I am going to go live next. You can come along and join in and bring your ideas as well. In the meantime, stay safe, keep well and keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye. <laughs>